Hi, friends. What a surprise to have discovered that my hourglass owl holiday palette arrived today. It was scheduled to arrive tomorrow, but I had a feeling it would arrive early. I was hopeful, and here. She is. This is the exclusive compact only available on hourglass.com. But let me go back a little bit. Hourglass had released their holiday collection, or specifically the ambient lighting edit unlocked palettes. We had the pleasure of enjoying these palettes last year, where Katie Scott had designed three exclusive compacts with three different palette curations that you can buy as is or for the first time that was introduced last year can customize your palettes. You could choose the compact and you can choose the powders you decide to be in that compact, which was just wonderful. And that's what I did when I purchased the Tiger Compact housing the medium shade curation right and then I gave in and had to buy the elephant compact custom with the deep curation or I'll just say the palette three for this year we have the jellyfish leopard and snake out of all three the most appealing to me is the snake because of the color choices you can't go wrong with that watercolor teal blue and the vivacious red but the snake itself <laughs> is a little creepy to me and that's just a me thing my mom hates snakes so maybe i inherited that fear from her perhaps. In addition to the compacts, Hourglass also released a snake brush, which I'll be skipping on. I was happy to just get the one palette. And for those details, these palettes retail for $90. I believe last year they were $85. We're looking at a 12-month suggested shelf life, and these palettes are made in Italy. To quickly go over the three because I only have one, it looks like the Jellyfish Compact is for the lighter skin tones that houses three new shades. The Leopard Compact for the medium part of the spectrum only has one new shade. And although I consider myself to be a part of the medium, medium tan part of the skin complexion spectrum, I was no way going to pay $90 for just one shade. I already have two of these suckers and actually the original Unlock palette and the Ghost palette. I got a bunch of hours glass powders okay I didn't want to pay $90 for some replicates the snake palette is the one that houses palette three with five new shades out of the six and that one appealed to me the most because last year palette three which I have here in the elephant palette originally housed in the tiger if you just bought them as is had these beautiful copper rose shades and the ambient powder in let me see here the finishing powder in transcendent light which I could could use as a bronzer a little bit of sculpting but there wasn't a powder in here for me to actually set which was okay for me that's why I opted for the medium curation and I had both dim light and soft light dim light I would use to finish the rest of my face soft light I would use to set my concealer under the eyes and now we first of all this is simply exquisite I know Hourglass loves to do similar looking shades every year. And if you haven't encountered Hourglass before, they are known for their baked powders that mimic different types of light effects on the skin. Dim light, soft light, moonlight, radiant light. How would these different lights carry over to the skin? And they aim to present that effect through their powder when applied on the skin, mostly as finishing. So because they're baked, they have almost this pearlescent sheen finish to them when buffed onto the skin, leaving behind a soft focus finish, usually reserved for the final step of your makeup application. When foundation, cheek products have all been applied, you will use a finishing powder to ensure all those products are well blended and buffed into the skin. So it doesn't look powdery afterwards, but everything is just seamless and again, has that ethereal glow about it right that's very blurring on the skin it has a little bit of a sheen but it's not metallic or high shine or even high pearl there's just something about that low grade reflectivity that virtually makes your face look flawless
there you go and they use that same technology with their blushes and their bronzers you can see here many of them are marbleized so they take that ambient powder light technology marbleize it with the pigment and you still have a similar finish that you experience with the finishing powders with your blush and bronzers some are just solid here same thing with the highlighter so let's go in to these swatches because i'm sure you're dying to know ambient lighting powder in radiant light golden beige and this again is used to set and finish the face this is a little peachy on me but i think i can get away with it as an under eye setting powder as well as an all over finishing one ambient lighting blush new shade in coral haze and this is a pink coral Ooh, that's pretty and don't you worry we'll get into the comparisons after we do all these swatches okay next up our ambient metallic strobe lighting powder new shade in infinite strobe light and this is a warm gold my goodness ambient lighting blush new shade in sunbeam and we're looking at a rich peach oh that's pretty kind of reminds me of that copper shade from the elephant palette but it doesn't have as much sparkly pearly which i kind of like ambient strobe lighting blush new shade in mystic flush and this is a mid-tone pink coral shade that is vibrant whoa that's like a hot pink I like it. And lastly, our ambient lighting bronzer, new shade in solar bronze, a rich bronze. Whoa. Now I was actually surprised at how deep this looked in person because it kind of looked the same in photos and I compared it immediately to transcendent light. Transcendent Light is the setting powder and this is a new bronzing shade. And for sure, the bronzer isn't deep enough for complexions that go beyond tan, I feel if you wanna get that bronze effect, you might still be able to get these blushes to show up on deeper complexions. But is this a sign that maybe next year <laughs> we'll get a new bronze color that's even deeper than solar bronze? Mm -hmm. So here are all the shades for palette three. Again, I customize my compact to have the owl. Let's go into some comparison shades and I'll flip onto this arm also because I have less chipping on this hand, by the way, from ILNP's new Cosmos collection that recently released. This is Dark Matter. I know you can't even mm. let me begin with Radiant Light from the Owl Compact to set up the first round of comparison shades. I'll go into my tiger palette and please keep in mind when I say tiger palette, I know if you just bought the tiger palette as is from last year, it would house palette three, but because mine is custom, okay, it has palette two because people keep on asking me, but I thought the tiger, yes, the tiger palette has palette three if you bought it as is, but because I customized it, I have palette two in the tiger, okay? Thank you so much for understanding. This is Dim Light, which is a natural beige, whereas Radiant Light is a golden beige, so you can see that Dim Light a little more neutral. And Soft Light is a pale peach. So any of these will work on me. We'll see how the Radiant Light works under my eyes. Maybe it'll give a little more brightening to that area. The new Ambient Lighting Blush in Coral Haze from the Owl Palette. Compared to Iridescent Coral, and Radiant Rose, I believe. Let me double check on this because my gosh, I always, yes, Iridescent Coral and Radiant Rose. So let me grab these two, Iridescent Coral and Radiant Rose. Radiant Rose seems a little more like neon leaning and the Iridescent has more pearl finish and I actually like to use this on closer to the center of my face for a little bit of like that sheen on the lower part of my cheeks. Now with the Elephant Palette, I would like to swatch these three. And again, originally found in the Tiger Palette, let me get these shades right. We're looking at Burnish Glow, which is the Warm Coral, the Ambient Metallic Strobe Lighting in Copper Flash, which is the Copper Shine shade, and Iridescent Rose is the Warm Medium Rose. Again, we have the Burnish Glow, Copper Flash, Iridescent Rose. Copper Flash, I thought, when I swatch this guy here, this shade is Sunbeam from the Owl palette and it has like the marbleized look as well. Compared to Copper Flash, this has a little more pink and Copper Flash is more copper leaning. In terms of the finish, 
This might be a little smoother and perhaps more suitable to be placed lower on the cheekbones because I know that was an issue or a concern for many. It had a little more sparkle in there and if you have texture on this part of your face, it could accentuate that texture. This might not, so we'll play with it for sure. And the Mystic Flush shade from the Owl Palette compared to all of these blush shades, that is beautiful. It is truly pink coral as opposed to what we find here from the palette two from last year, palette three from last year. You know, this is, I mean, you can't go wrong with the pink coral. I think it's fantastic. Yes, I was going on and on about in my top five blush video that I tend to gravitate toward plummy, whiny shades for fall, winter, but I can get down with the coral depending on depending. For the highlight, we have Metallic Strobe Powder in Infinite Strobe Light. Again, new shade for palette three. I'm running out of room already. So that's from the Owl palette. I'll next swatch this shade from palette two last year. We're looking at the Metallic Strobe Powder, Metallic, Metallic Strobe Powder in Beaming Strobe Light. So let's take a swatch there. A little lighter like a touch, maybe more champagne-y than gold. I'll pick up two swatches from palette three. This middle one here, which is the Metallic Strobe Powder in Brilliant Glow Strobe Light, and here, the Metallic Strobe Powder in Divine Strobe Light. So let me keep track of oh, what fingers I'm using because I get confused. One of them is marbled, and the other one is just the standout. So this definitely has a little more gold. So again, this is the marble shade and this is the gold. This definitely looks a little more gold than the one from the Owl, like a little bit. I was actually able to get away with this highlighter because it didn't appear as a shadow when I turned or faced head on and actually had beautiful shine on the cheekbones. Now let us compare. I will have to hop back on this side because this is Solar Bronze from the Owl Palette to be compared with Transcendent Light. Again, this is not meant to be a bronzer. It is a setting powder for deeper skin tones, but compared to it, more of like a reddish, like a, a tawny, where Solar Bronze is giving a little more warmth. So those are the swatches and the comparison swatches. I already have my Suku foundation on with my Lancome concealer on eyebrows are on, nothing has been set because I would like to try Radiant Light on both under eyes and all over my face. We'll get into the highlighter blushes and bronzer. And with that said, it's time for you to come in a little closer. Another consideration to make when dealing with powders like these is what type of brush you use. As I mentioned at the top of the video, I have a lot of Japanese made brushes ranging from different bristle types, from goat hair, red squirrel, blue squirrel. With these hourglass powders, even though they're baked, they're still quite soft. And I find myself still using squirrel hair brushes even though they're on the softer side, it really all depends on the task, right? So if I want a little more coloring here, I will use a goat hair brush. And for under eyes, I've been using my Sonia G Designer Pro quite a bit. It's dyed goat hair, but quite soft. It's not too stiff, but it has nice feedback here. You see the elasticity, and I think it has an appropriate pickup for this type of powder. Again, going into Radiant Light, you see there on the brush, and tapping that on the under eye. And that is actually quite nice. Again, I have the Lancome concealer in Bisque 350, I believe, which is already peachy in undertone already. And I think Radiant Light adds really nice brightening to the under eye. So let's pat some here on the center of my forehead. I'm not applying all over quite yet as I would like to save Radiant Light for the final step in the finishing one. So now let's get into Solar Bronze. I'm actually quite excited. I think we'll do squirrel hair on one side and goat on the other. Going first in with my Hokuto Sora series, I think this might all be squirrel hair. I can confirm down below in the description box. I just love this brush because of the head size and it's perfect for these hourglass pans. And I think pretty nice pickup even for squirrel, right? And going into Solar Bronze and 
whoa, is interesting. It looks a little cooler in pan, but it applies quite warm on the skin. I'm gonna bring it up here. And as I mentioned before, the finish of these powders are beyond smooth and pretty much foolproof to apply where they blend well easily and you can build up the color, right? You could build up the intensity to what you want to achieve in terms of having maybe a lighter application versus a heavier one. And on this side, we could go in with the goat hair. You know what, let me get my Sonia brush. I think I would like to use her classic cheek. This is a mixture of dyed and undyed goat hair and will be a little more of a robust pickup. But because the bristles are longer, you will still have really nice control on the application. So that's lovely also. If I wanted even more, I would probably go in with her soft buffer. Soft buffer is gonna pick up a lot more. So if I wanted to really smoke out the, the hollows, you could see this brush is going to deliver that application. So depending on how you want your hourglass powders to appear on your cheeks will determine what brush you use. And I'm just happy to have quite the selection in varying the degree of intensity when it comes to these hourglass powders and dialing up and down in how I would like them to appear on the cheeks. What shall we go in now with the blush? Ooh, I'm dying to try this one. Again, let me scroll up to get the correct. Coral Haze, the pink coral shade. I will purposely use I don't know what to do. Let me use soft cheek. This is dyed goat hair, but the bristles are longer, which will have a more of a wispier application on the cheeks, yes? And I'm starting from the center purposefully because I, th oh, that's pretty. You know, I'm a sucker for blush. You know this, fam. Blush is the one makeup product I do believe that you truly need. If you were on the desert island type of a scenario and you just needed to bring one product with you so you could look alive and vibrant, it's blush. And this color is giving just that. Ooh, that's pretty. Dare I say I like it better than the palette 2 curation from last year. The palette 2 curation I liked. I, I, I mean, I gushed over it, but I enjoy the more coral leaning hue from this palette 3 where last year it was more of like a neutral pink so it was a little cooler on me but i i dealt with it because when compared or rather when blended with the bronzer it balanced itself out but ooh to have this shade mm. let's try this pink now this was the more this one this was the one that's pretty Again, I'll still go in with my soft cheek. My goodness, that picks up quite a, a bit of product. So let me start a little higher and then I'll run it down closer to the center of my face. Oh, I love that shade. And you see, I'm getting a little more uh, confident in placing it closer to the center. That's pretty. That is so pretty. And the finish is exquisite. Smooth on the skin. It, it looks, it doesn't even look like powder. Again, that's the hourglass effect. Now with this shade, again, I would treat this as more of a blush topper. And again, this is another new shade, Sunbeam, the rich peach. And because it is a rich peach chopper of a shade, I would, I think I'm going to go in again with my classic cheek. This is a nice in-between brush that's not gonna to give too much, but just enough. And for that, Let's now apply this a little lower. Oh, I see. Okay, it does have a similar effect as Copper Flash for sure, but because it's more peach than copper, I think it quite lovely here on the cheekbones or rather on the apple of the cheek cheekbones. And I'll do the same here, a little just under the eyes. That's pretty. It's not too bad in terms of texture, especially if you buff it down, which we will do with our, our smooth buffer. Now here is the true test. This highlighter, ambient metallic strobe lighting powder in warm gold. It is warm gold going with a towel house brush. This is, I believe, ooh, I think this is a blend of squirrel and goat. I'm not too sure. That's pretty. 
maybe a teensy insy wincy bit of shadow, but I don't I can't really detect it. Can you? Yeah, shiny. My goodness. You don't need much. I could tell you that. I'm gonna bring some here on the brow bone. Why not? I haven't dusted highlighter on the center of my nose for quite some time. Why not? It's a, it's a new palette. So let's do it. And now since everything has been applied. Which, you know, although I do have my Kiyaki Smooth Buffer, and I think this could fit well in the pan, I could also use this brush because it is called a soft buffer. And I think more appropriate as I don't want the Smooth Buffer to pick up any of the blush and then it just ends up all over my face, using the smaller brush head to now buff everything down. Again, this is the Golden Peach shade, Radiant Light. And you can see how that brings everything together, smooths it out, leaves behind that soft focus finish, and virtually enhances the skin, right? Although you're using a powder, the skin does not look dry. It looks more refreshed. Also depends on what brush you use, but my goodness. And I have to say, if you haven't seen my Suku video, I was explaining how the shade 040 is more of my uh, autumn winter shade and it matches my neck, but it doesn't match the rest of my body because it is quite tan. I have to say though, palette three kind of put, it, it pulled more color into my face from the solar bronze shade and the cheek products. In fact, I would like to, I'm gonna go wild here and apply a little more of this shade. This is just beautiful. I can't get enough. I know we already buffed, but woo, my goodness. You see that? You see that? I would also like to demonstrate how we can use our face palette on the eyes because I think it is important when spending so much money on wrong products such as an hourglass palette that you use it as much as you possibly can. Truly, even though it is a face and cheek palette, I think it advantageous to use these types of palettes also on the eyes, where maybe you just primarily rely on liner, which oh, I know, I saw those Lisa Eldridge liners. Her demos were exquisitely done. Each and every one of them made me want to buy the entire collection. From the black shade all the way through the black gold shade, I just wanted them all because how you can smoke them out or just use them for wing looks, it just makes it so easy. And that's what I did on Sunday. I just used my Permagel liner from Pat McGrath Labs and Black Coffee, pff, holy grail, for a wing. And I just, I just love the simplicity of that approach. And if you just have a face palette and a liner, Okay, and for that reason, I'm purposely using a bigger blending brush. I kind of want to use, you know what, let me get it. Also from Sonia's Fundamental Face Set, this is her Worker L. I think an appropriate size for what we wish to do. This is more of like an, a super blown out application of bronzer, which I think translates well for what I would like to achieve. I do enjoy, however, the transcendent light color from Palette 3 last year's release because it does have more of like that tawny, almost ruddy tone to it where Solar Bronze is warmer for sure, but it is a lovely tone. I'm gonna extend it past my lash line and I also like to place some color under the lash line. You don't have to do this because I know depending on your eye shape and size, this could make the eyes look too kind of sickly or what have you. So approach accordingly and decide what you would like to do. And then I'll apply radiant light here on the center of my lid, which I think brings forward a nice sheen to the lid where you could have that contrast between uh, something more beigey peach on the lid and then it moves into that bronze hue through the crease and we can go in with our metallic strobe powder here on the inner corner. 
You could also apply any of these blush shades to the crease. I think that is a fantastic approach where you apply it beyond your lash line so it can kind of move through the temples and down the cheekbones, which is like a, a look for sure, like that super blown out eye blushed effect, you know what I'm saying? And then of course for liner, I had to crack into a new black coffee because my little mini black coffee was not surviving. You know, I must retire her. <laughs> I can't get over how beautiful this is. I'm fine with not buying the other ones. I don't need the other ones. I am grateful to have picked up the hour one because I think it is sold out. And I'm not sure if Hourglass will restock this specific palette design because I know other retailers will have the ready-made palettes because you won't be able to customize them on other retailers, only on Hourglass. That is an exclusive service. But the Owl palette, or compact rather, was just available on Hourglass, so I don't know. I'm happy I didn't hesitate. It was one of those things where when I saw the sneak peeks, I, I was sold. And another reason why I decided to not get ABH's Fall Romance because it was either one or the other for me. And I have so much eyeshadow and you can argue the same. I do have a lot of face palettes, but I don't know, man, the face palettes for me hold a little more value because in the end, if I were to do a minimal makeup day, I would go for the face first. I absolutely would use blush, bronzer, highlight, and all that. Even if I forego foundation, I would still use these powders to create uh, structure and flush and vibrancy on the complexion. Whereas I probably wouldn't use eyeshadow as regularly. You know what I mean? So we got a little baby wing going on. I know sometimes it's hit or miss with me, with these guys. <laughs> and as I was watching Lisa Eldridge do her wings, I mean, she is a celebrity makeup artist for a reason, but I'm just so captivated by how effortless she applies her baby wings. Katie Jane Hughes too, I love watching Katie apply her wings she does it so well and of course i try i try to mimic what they do but it just i feel like it always ends in failure but using the brush after applying the liner does help it does help a little bit you know what i'm saying are you guys getting the new lisa eldridge liners i if i do get one it's probably going to be like the chocolate brown one but that other shade that's like grayish brown, I forgot the name of it. But then she had that green one too. You see what I mean? Oh my God. That's not too bad. I like what's happening. We're gonna curl the lashes. And by the way, I think you already know that Refer reconstructed their eyelash curler is more sturdy, more durable, and it comes in two different curves, 18 and 20, where you have a tighter curve for smaller, deeper set eyes and more of a standard like for my eyes that are a little bigger but don't have that deep curve fantastic to have that choice and you get two rubber lining replacements with each which is important to keep track because don't do like me and not clean your lash curler and it's recommended that you replace the rubber lining maybe every three months i i actually don't know the frequency that was just a made-up number based on mascara usage kill lash a little bit here to set up the curl and a little bit of stiffness so those lashes stay up and going in with the isa mascara afterwards for additional volume and just overall Wham bam. I have Suku's lip gloss on, but I actually want something with a little more color. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I like that. This is the Makeout Club Soft Blur Lipstick in Batty. I just needed a little more something, you know what I'm saying? And here is the final look using the new Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Unlocked palette for holiday 2023 in the Owl Compact Palette 3. Again, I had a custom made and I adore this palette. I do love it. Oh, 
man, I you know. I do like it better than last year's, and here's why. Because I chose palette three, since it had both the finishing powders that I could use for my skin tone, the blush and the bronzer, it made more sense for me in that I can use the entire palette from setting all the way through highlighting, where palette three from last year, there wasn't a setting powder for me to use, which was fine because since it was over uh, the fall winter season, I typically only powdered under my eyes anyway. So I would bring along a smaller powder compact like the Pat McGrath Labs under eye blurring powder, which didn't take up much space. And then I used the Transcendent Light, which was a setting powder for deeper complexions as a bronzer kind of sculptor on the hollows of my cheeks and and use the more copper rosy shades on the cheekbones and, and apples of the cheeks and the highlighters worked well. Where palette three this year had radiant light, don't know how that's gonna work out for deeper complexions in terms of setting. It could be brightening for the center of the face, but it really all depends on the shade that is used for concealer and whatnot and what effect you wish to achieve. And then these blush shades are more pink coral peach, which I just adore. I think they add beautiful warmth to my cheeks and bring everything together in a way that, you know, doesn't look ultra summery, which I, you know, which was a concern for me when going into the autumn winter season since I do gravitate toward plums and wines, but I think this very much can be autumn appropriate, especially if you choose an eyeshadow palette or singles, what have you, that have those richer jewel tones. Solar bronze is a beautiful color, but it does run warm on me. And I consider myself to be uh, medium, medium tan with more of a me, a neutral is a neutral undertone. You could say maybe golden olive, depending. I really don't know. Let me adjust this light because I don't know what's happening outside. So in that regard, palette three for this year is actually more of a practical curation for my skin tone, right? But I know it is limited in terms of how many can wear it if you are deeper than me because I know that is a concern for many. I do love palette three for me. 100%. I don't feel the need to buy another hourglass palette uh, from the simple reason that I am on a makeup budget this year, or I should be every year, and I just wanted to spend my money on one which I thought was truly special and that could work for me, and more practically speaking, the curation that had the most new shades, right? Although they look similar to last year's shade or the ones that I do own, I still think they are different enough for me to have in my collection. And I didn't wanna spend uh, $90 three more times for replicate shades or shades that were just meh on me, right? And the fact that I was able to grab the Hourglass exclusive owl design, I think, you know, this for me was the most beautiful. I love the leopard one because it's so sultry and you have the leopards against the black background. Honestly though, the tiger one, I think is one of the most beautiful out of all of them. I guess now seven, right? If you consider last year's designs and the elephant too, I think is gorgeous. And you had the butterflies. Again, I love, I love the snake colors but it's a snake, you know what I mean? So right now, owl is number one and tiger number two and elephant number three, yeah? I just love the owl against the off-white ivory background and just look at the detail of the feathers here. It's just so beautiful. I think this is like a snow owl. I actually don't, I'll look it up and put it up next to me, do a little research on this species of owl, but just elegant. I love it so much. So that is my review of the Hourglass palettes. I won't say to buy it, right? I just would say use your own discernment. If you feel like you have a bunch of Hourglass powders that look similar to what I applied here, because I get it. In the end, I don't think you'll be able to decipher if I applied palette three from this year or palette three from last year. It'll be quite difficult. I would say, however, based on what I've applied, because I actually used palette three on Sunday, Overall, that looks a little more copper orange, like a little more of that part of the spectrum, 
Red Hot Orange versus Palette 3 from this year is definitely more peachy pink coral overall, even with like that shinier blush topper shade, right? And the bronzer compared to, I don't know, did I do? Let me see here. This is the bronzer from last year's medium palette. So this is a lot lighter, right, than solar bronze and again this is transcendent light from palette 3 2022 so i have to use a stiffer more dense brush with the tiger palette or excuse me palette 2 bronzer from last year where i will have to use a lighter hand with the solar bronzer color from this year's palette so those are my observations i do enjoy palette 3 in terms of me being able to use the entire palette from top to bottom so this will be my go-to uh face compact i think for the rest of the year i know nars released something it looks gorgeous but i cannot i have to stop here i gotta make a choice and this to me is just more beautiful it just feels more special to me and I'm sure the NARS blush shades are just going to be exquisitely gorgeous. Last year's palette was okay. I did like it. But to me, the shades from what's coming up this year are a little more appealing to me. Like there was this kind of burnt brown shade in there that I was like, ooh. You know what? You know how I feel about the burnt browns, okay? I'll take a look at it again online. But very happy with my purchase. I don't think I'll be buying any more going forward. I'm quite happy with what I have because the Leopard palette that is palette two, which is again more for my skin to only got one new shade. I can't do it. And I don't wanna get the lighter curation cause it could work on me, but I think that's just a waste of money in my opinion. So sticking with this for now, let me know what you think down below. Did you order it already? What are your thoughts? I will see you all in those comments. And until then that is. A wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, face palette extravaganza, or my top five highlighters. Stay tuned for that. Take care and I'll see you again soon.